This is the LN150. You only need one person to operate this instrument because the operator is located at the prism pool. The distance range is from 0.9 meters to 130 meters, which is about 3 feet to 426 feet. So picture an 850 foot diameter circle centered on the instrument. That is your available working area. The LN150 measures distance 20 times per second which provides continuous distance measuring and continuous data. Its distance measurement accuracy is 3 millimeters, which is between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch. It can turn 360 degrees horizontally, and its vertical angle range is from plus 55 degrees to negative 30 degrees. The angle measurement accuracy is 3 seconds. It will automatically level when you first turn it on, you just need to make sure the tripod is close to level first. It needs to be level plus or minus 3 degrees, which is easy to eyeball. The LN150 has inclination compensation up to an angle of 6 minutes if the instrument gets out of level. The software knows this and is compensating the data. It will not automatically level on its own, however. You should get an alert pop up on your data collector if the instrument tilts more than 6 minutes out of level. At that point, you would press the auto level button to re-level it. The LN150 can operate in temperatures from minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. It has a dustproof and waterproof rating of IP65, which means it is water resistant, but it can't be submerged. This is the wireless antenna carrying handle. This is a guide light that's used to help you turn the instrument towards you when you're trying to track the prism. This is the window, and there's a device in there that tracks the prism and gets distance measuring data using a laser. This is the operation panel. There's buttons and indicator lights, and I'll go over that in a little bit. The LN150 is self-leveling. So when you first turn it on, it will auto level and you can automatically level it by pressing one of the buttons. There are a few lasers on this instrument. Look up the laser safety on your own, but here's the basic information on these lasers. There are two lasers that always emit from the window when the instrument is tracking the prism. One is used for distance measurement and the other helps the instrument track the prism. These are barely visible and are class 1 lasers, meaning they won't harm you or your eyesight. There is another laser that you can turn on. It is a laser pointer feature that will shine a laser dot on the ground. The laser pointer is powerful and is classified as a class 3R laser. Do not point this at someone or let it go in your eyes or someone else's. The laser pointer feature is not necessary to perform layout. So we don't ever turn it on, but you can mess around with it if you want. The laser plummet is a class 2 laser, which isn't that bad. You still don't want to make direct eye contact with it. So I'm going to turn this instrument by using the remote control on the controller, and I'm going to turn the laser pointer on. There we go. So that laser, which is a laser pointer, is class 3R. That's the one you do not want to turn and point at somebody. Okay, and then the guide light, I'll turn that on. There you go. You can see that the guide light has two different colors. And the, the way this works is if you're, let's say you're out there in the field and you're over here, you're actually only going to see the red light. But if you're over on that side, you're only going to see the green light. That lets you know which way to turn it. This is the LN150 case. It's got latches here that come down. And the case opens up. It holds the LN150, two batteries, the prism, and the battery charger and cord go here. This is the charger. Just put the battery in and slide it in. So the arrow faces the 
front, you slide it in. It takes about eight hours to charge both of these batteries. These batteries will last five hours each. So you got a total of about 10 hours of battery out in the field. When they're fully charged, those blinking green lights will turn solid green. So just charge these overnight and they'll be ready for the next day. Always make sure it's latched before you pick it up. You don't want to pick it up and the instrument flop out. I always put my thumb there anyways as a safety precaution. On the side you'll notice there's these connection points and those are for the strap that comes with this case. So you can strap it around, strap it to this side and carry it like a uh, backpack. But usually I just carry it by the handle. So you just grab your instrument, hold it by the handle, place it on the table, look at the screw, get it in there, and just screw it on. You don't need to tighten it too much. The instrument's serial number is here, and that's what's going to show up when you connect the instrument to your controller. You'll want to select the proper instrument if you have more than one instrument on the job site. Back here, this is where the battery goes. Here's your battery. There's an arrow there, so we're going to put it in and slide it that way. There's also a picture inside this compartment that shows you what to do. All right, and then we're going to close it. This is inside the battery compartment. There are two switches and a reset button. The only thing you really need to know about is the WLAN slash Bluetooth switch. And it needs to be to the left, which will make sure Bluetooth is selected. This is the power button. Press it once to turn it on. This is the auto level button. This is the auto level indicator light. When the indicator light is blinking green, that means the instrument is in the process of auto leveling. When you first turn the instrument on, it will start auto leveling. Then it's going to turn around 180 degrees and continue its auto leveling procedure. When the instrument is finished leveling during this initial leveling procedure, it's going to turn back around to the front and beep. And the indicator light will stop blinking and it will turn solid green. You'll see it's red as it's turning. That's okay. Once it stops, it'll turn green. There we go. So when you first turn the instrument on, it begins to auto level. Later, if you want to auto level the instrument again, just press that auto level button. This is the wireless connection indicator light. It lets you know if the instrument is connected to the data collector. If it is green and blinking fast, that means it is not connected to the data collector. When the instrument is connected to the data collector, it will turn solid green and not be blinking. I'm going to connect the controller to the instrument now. Once it connects, you'll see that it goes solid green. Okay, we're connected now, and you can see it's a solid green light. This is the laser plummet button. If you press it once, it will turn the laser on. Each time you press it, it will increase the laser's intensity on the ground. Remember, the laser plummet is a laser that is shot down onto the ground directly below the instrument, and it replaces the use of a plumb bob. When the laser plummet is on, the indicator light will be blinking green. To turn it off, press and hold this button until you hear a beep. Then the light will turn off. Okay, to turn the instrument off, we're going to press and hold the green button. The instrument will automatically turn back to its storing position. And now it's ready to take off the tripod and put directly into the case. And it turns into this position so it fits nicely into the case. Take care of your instrument. Don't drop it.
It does not have any fall protection and it will almost certainly break it. Always make sure the case is fully latched before you pick it up. Don't place the instrument on the ground. You may get mud or dirt in it which could get into the instrument. Try and protect it from sudden jolts or heavy vibrations. Don't put the instrument case in the bed of your pickup truck or in a toolbox in the bed of your pickup truck. It will get bounced around back there. Don't let it get rained on. It can handle getting wet a little, but don't let it stay out in a downpour. You will probably get condensation built up on the inside of the window if you leave it out in the rain. Don't carry the instrument on the tripod. Especially don't fold the legs up and then sling it over your shoulder. This will knock it out of calibration or damage it. Turn the power off before removing the battery. Don't manually rotate the instrument with your hands if the instrument is on. Take the batteries out before putting it in the case. And make sure it's dried off before putting it back in the case.